it went off about 45 minutes ago, so we're good. So we got the power. She goes, I'm not going to be able to watch you. And then you can say whatever you want. That's right. Now I can't answer your question. Power's back on. <laughs> <laughs> okay there, Mr. McKee. Are you ready? Are you sure? Yes, i sure. I don't see no red light. Wait! Don't start yet. No. Sherry's here. She's my five minute. <laughs> <laughs> Just take some time and focus on who he is, who God is to you. Just acknowledge to him on what he can do for us and what he can do and what he has done. Take time to allow the Holy Spirit to be with us, His presence. Focus on his perspective, what he has in store for us, not just tonight, not just for you, but as a church. What's his perspective for us? As we focus on him, what are his likes? What does he like? And what are his dislikes? Lord, we're so grateful for who you are and for how you uh, have created us, Father, and created uh, everything that we see, um, everything that we're a part of, Father. It's all because of you, and you're a part of everything there is. And we thank you, Lord, for being the God that you are. And we praise you and we give you glory. We ask for your presence today. Tonight, Lord, just uh, fill this place with your spirit, fill our hearts, Lord, that we may learn so much more about you and that we may draw closer to you. I thank you for each one that is here, each one that is streaming, and Lord, I just pray that we would be able to, 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 to understand your presence and, and know that you are with us today. And Lord, we just thank you for your presence, and Lord, we, we thank you for your perspective, Lord, of what you uh, have in store for us and, and how that you have insight to all the things that we are dealing with. 
and we thank you for your insight and your perspective on us and Lord what our goals are and Lord continue to remind us continue to help us see your direction and, and where you want us to be Lord we thank you for the things that you like and Lord we even thank you for the things you dislike because you showed them to us and we're so grateful for those things and Lord tonight as we uh, uh, have fellowship and conversation Lord as we study your word and and we share our request and the things that uh, are heavy on our hearts, Lord, that you would just allow us to, to be open. And Lord, that we would have uh, uh, the ability to fall back on you and allow you to answer those requests and needs. And Father, as we do that, help us to never lose our focus on you, to continue to focus on you in our relationships and in our, in our homes and and Father, in our jobs, in our neighborhoods, and right here in our own church, Lord, we just want to keep you number one, and you are the focus of everything that we do. We thank you so much, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Something God's done for you this week. Share Something God's done for you. Roseman? I uh, would like for us to pray for Jerry Kennedy. Um, I'm one of her caregivers that they call every 90 days and give us an update. We haven't seen her now since February. But they called and they said that she was not sick, but she was not responding. Mm. And um, so I talked to somebody else that has a relative that works over there. And the relative says, she's doing absolutely fine. There's nothing to worry about. Oh. So when I came to church, uh, I was going to talk to Vicki, but she wasn't here. So I called her, and because her son works there, and I know I can depend on him, and uh, I asked her if she would talk to Randy and give me what is actually happening there. And um, so she did, and he, she called me back, and she said, he said that they're all doing the same thing. They're just so disheartened. Uh, they are bickering. Mm said we spend 90% of our time separating people from <laughs> quarrels and uh, wow. uh, they, they just don't see any hope. They just lost all hope. And uh, mm. you know, I, I don't know what it would be to be to, like in some place like that and not be able to get out and not anybody be able to get in to see me. And uh, it's just really a real burden for me. Okay. She's the one that's over 100? She's over at Villa Grant. What did you say? Her age, she's over 100? Yes. No. yes. She's 101. 101. Mm -hmm. She'll be 102 in January. Wow. Okay. She used to sing in our choir. and. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. I think I remember her. And yeah. All right. Something God's done for you. Yes, Jeff. The, uh, the East Coast kids made it home safely and uh, they, they tested negative for COVID. Awesome. I, th I think they got tested because okay. they've been on a plane. Right, so right. At least we didn't get into it. Though. Yeah, that's automatic. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. Amen. Something else. Yes. Kathy's doing better. What was that? Kathy's doing better? She's not well, but she's doing better. Awesome. She was here Sunday. Yeah, she was. She was. It's a good day of praise day on Sunday. It was good. It was good. Anything else? Yes, Kayla? He's just brought like, a lot of redemption to me through a lot of the hard things that I've been going through. Okay. Really cool. He's answered your prayers? Amen. Amen. God is doing some great things and, and I want to take time tonight just to, to share and, or for you to share and, and, and uh, tell us to testify those things that, that God has done for us. 
it's important that we do that. Um, and I was so grateful on Sunday for, again, for all of those that stood up and said, listen, I just want to thank you for your prayers and uh, for whatever the reasons are. And we had have a lot of people that, that we've been praying for and God's continuing to heal. So um, it, it's exciting about that. And that's one thing. But there's, there's also things that happen to us during the week that are just God things. And they may be something small, but it's okay. We need to acknowledge it and, and allow him to, his presence to, to lift us up. Marianne. I, this weekend was very, very good for all of us. Um, the girl's half sister, whom I consider part of the family too, was there and we went to the storage shed to go through more grandma stuff. And we were laughing, crying, the whole smear across there. And including Kate, because Kate came along way later than my girls, so she missed out on some of the stuff that happened with my girls and their grandparents together. She didn't have a big memory of her, of her grandpa because she was just little when he passed away. And Kate got so excited, and she is a Christian, very much so. She and Will both, and they go to church at a church up there in Battle Mountain, Nevada. I guess the name of the town. And she is very involved there with that. But we went to lunch, just five of us. And the waitress was trying to figure out what was going on. Everybody's doing things, you know, and stuff. And I said, let me explain. I'm the mom. <laughs> this is my number one, my number two, my number three, and my number four. And Kate just was so overwhelmed by that that wow. I would consider her As one. my child, too. Yeah. She had a really rough upbringing. A mother who deserted her and is still part of her life, but not as like she wanted it to be. And a stepmother is just awful to her. So I hope that I'm filling a space for her and that that's what God meant me to do. And it was very good to be with all of them and watch them be kind to each other. We went through jewelry boxes, you couldn't believe it would always be mm. <laughs> and stuff like that. Stories and Sure. Back and forth, and it was just really, really a wonderful time with all. Amen. Nothing like family time with God in the center of it. There's just nothing like that. Spiritual conversations, things that God's doing. Um, that's that's awesome stuff. It's it's really great when and when families can be together to meet the newest one, Parker. This right. is several of them, my two of my daughters and Kate had not met Parker, so this was. Saturday was a get together with all the family, the men and the women together, whereas I, Friday was just us. Yeah, and, and the testimony of your granddaughter, what you said earlier about her, you know, saying, I'm going to church. I'm, mm -hmm. You know, she's been here a couple of weeks. And, and she uh, needs it. She yeah. set up. Well, and God spoke to her heart. I could tell that, you know, through two weeks that she was here, and a Wednesday night, I think she was here one Wednesday night. And, mm -hmm. And, uh, and praying with us and understanding uh, how God works. So that's a good good praise. It's good stuff. All right. Anything else God's doing? All right. Before we go to our request, um, first of all, Harold had surgery on Tuesday, yesterday, and uh, and they they got into surgery and they had to remove a section. Uh, where the tumor was in his bowel and and uh, so they got in there and they were able to get the whole thing and uh, and then he had a, a place on his chest that was cancer and they got it too and they got them both and uh, they had the extra two hours of trying to reconnect uh, the section that they took out but they got it done and he is supposed to be uh, getting out on uh, on Saturday so everything went well uh, as a really scary start, and Mary is just, uh, Mary and Harold both are just thankful uh, for the Lord, and I spent some time on Monday night with them and praying with them and with Harold, and uh, you know, when we get up into our years, things start to happen, and questions start coming into our heads uh, about about things, and so uh, just one report, it was a miracle, there was none, they got everything, the doctor said they got everything, and he should be great. Uh, to move on. So that's the first praise, but continue to pray for Harold 
to heal, all right? He's on a very soft diet, going to be on one for a while because um, they struggled getting everything put back together. Uh, the second one is my daughter-in-law. Uh, she is doing very well. I talked to her just a while ago. And uh, the only COVID symptoms she left are breathlessness after activity. So when she starts to be back and trying to get back involved in everything, she gets a little short of breath. But other than that, she has made it through the COVID really well, and she's, uh, she's doing good. So thank you for the prayers for her. Um, and uh, so that's been a good thing on my end of the on my end of the spectrum. So God's, God's been good. So, all right. Other requests that you may have. Yes, Marianne. Hey, pray for Kate. Kate. Because she is trying to conceive and she's, they're having a rough time with it and she's getting very discouraged. So if we can pray for her, for the, God to give them a child that she will conceive. I think God. she and Will would be wonderful, wonderful parents. Okay. Also, keep Heather and the family in your prayers. They go back to court on the 14th at Katrina. They have borrowed money from us to get a specialist witness to go in and advocate for her that should just put this all to rest, which would be one of what, three and a half years of it has just got to quit. Yeah. It's not fun in the court system, that's for sure. Yes. My man's been in the shop for two days now, and they're hoping it's not the transmission. Okay, I'm, one more time. My man has been in the shop for two days now, and he's hoping it's not the transmission. All right. I'm hoping not either. They don't have it told you yet, huh? What's that? It's in the shop two days, and you don't know yet? Right. I okay. called him at 3.30 today. He's, he wasn't sure what it was. He was having a test drive, and he was hoping it wasn't the transmission. Okay. All right. Good thing I have kids that have cars. <laughs> Help, mom. Yeah. I like that. It's good. Others? Yes. My friend Brett is safe. But 53 officers were hurt Monday night. Wow. They're minor injuries, but. Yeah. Crazy, crazy things. Don't get it. Don't understand. All right. Others? Yes, ma'am, Miss Sherry. Our son Stephen is looking, is, has put his application in for three places. He finishes this fellowship in June of 2021, and he needs a job at that point. So he has three applications out. So they're trying to figure out um, where they should go. All right. Okay. Not here, huh? Uh, Grand Junction. <laughs> it's all right. You can pray for that too. That'd be okay. That'd be all right. That'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough when your kids aren't around you. I mean, after you've had them for long, and you're ready to get rid of them, and then you're going, "We got to go this far to go see them." You know, it's tough. It's tough. All right. Caleb. Continue to keep my family in prayer with the COVID situation and the deaths. Cousins. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll get through it. Yeah. Okay. Continue to pray for those on the front line, uh, those that uh, we pray for every week. Um, as bread and, and, and so many others in so many ways. Uh, continue to pray for that. And I think we should pray for, uh, for a uh, vaccination. You know, that I know they're getting close and all talk and all that, getting everybody all excited, but it takes a while. It doesn't happen overnight. So uh, you know, continue to pray for those as far as COVID. Uh, continue to pray for our school. And our preschool, uh, we're getting close, should have an answer, I don't know, maybe by the end of the week on whether we're moving forward or not, for sure. Um, lots of things going on uh, in the district, but we're also waiting on the governor's decision, too, to make sure that they're going to allow it to happen. So, um, visited with Mindy and Holly today, and, and 
and uh, you know that's the prayer request. That's that's their you know for for us to pray uh, about those de those school decisions uh, are important. Okay. Safe Continue. Travis. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mary. Safe travels for us. We can yeah. Die Mary Ann, safe yeah. travels. You're right. And hopefully the Lord will soothe his soul so that he can be sure of what happened. Sure. Okay. Had something on my mind. Well, we've had we've had some visitors the last two uh, Sundays. Uh, in our church so we just need to continue to pray and um, you know if you don't know the real estate market's gone nuts so there's a lot of people moving in uh, on the western slope and, and uh, there's a couple of couples that uh, have been visiting the last two weeks that moved here in the last four or five weeks so looking for churches and uh, you know hopefully I don't scare them off so you know but but the Lord uh, the Lord's blessing and bringing those to to our service and uh, that's awesome and it gives us the opportunity uh, to minister to those people so i'm excited about what god's doing uh, in bringing people here from not even doing any kind of visitation because you can't uh, but god just continues to bring them in it's interesting because everyone is searching on the internet and for some reason our church on the internet side is really I think it's because it starts with a B, <laughs> but uh, but so far uh, that's where people are seeing uh, and coming. So it's a good thing. Yes, Jeff. Is there, is there some way to subtly let other church members know who these people are? I, I, I you see people and you say, I wonder if they're visiting, and, and I'm not sure. I, to walk up to them, say welcome to the church, and say, "Yeah, we've been here been for here five too. years." Uh, you know, Jeff. To your point, I did that exactly. Uh, there was a couple that was sitting in the back. I mean, we've been here the last two or three. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I feel bad about that, but you are exactly right. And so, the way to do it subtly, you know, a lot of they don't like to bring attention to themselves or whatever. To do it in the right way, and uh, most of the time, we get their information pretty quick. Um, from either Bruce or myself or, or uh, one of the deacons, they'll, they'll talk to them. But um, I try when I see someone, and a lot of times they're the first ones here, you know, so when I come in, they're, they're already sitting down. I'll make sure that I introduce myself to them and, and, uh, and then try to get as much information, but then tell someone else um, like Don or, or other Don or whoever, that way they can go and, and visit with them. So to do it in the service, yeah, I, it's, we used to just, hey, if you're a visitor, stand up, you know, man, nowadays that's not the thing to do, I guess, you know, it, it makes it hard for everybody. Sometimes I will acknowledge them in the service if I know them. There was a family two weeks ago on vacation, had five girls or four girls and a couple in the back and, and, uh, and I knew that I knew who they were because he called or he was he posted on Facebook right before I walked out of the office and that they were looking for a place to worship. And so uh, anyway, I knew that one, but they were traveling through. So I'll work on that. I think that's a good request uh, of some way to make that happen uh, because we want to welcome, them, you know, and you want to do it. And we all want to love them. Yes, ma'am. It was a lot easier whenever we had the seating that we had before and then you could look around but now then by the time you get through looking through the first two or three rows here uh, yeah we used to have a welcome time mm -hmm. you know walk around everybody and then you could kind of know that somebody's visiting or right. whatever and uh, and find that out so that helps a lot yeah it does but we have had some come in and go out and uh and you know I, hopefully we've talked to them but um it, it is hard. It's difficult. I felt bad about that couple. I felt terrible, but I said, I'm sorry. I just don't recognize everybody's face. So it's good. Well, you have an excuse. You just, just showed up. Yeah, I just showed up. Yeah, that's what, I'm the janitor. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so Jeff just say, hey, I'm sorry. I just showed up, but I want to know who you are. <laughs> All right. We got anything online there, Mr. Bruce? Okay, quiet.
quiet on the internet. All right? Others in here, other requests before we pray. Jeremy's best friend, Father Brett Roberts, Brett. had a setback and he's still in ICU. Wow. He's been in ICU for a long time. Almost four weeks. Four weeks. Okay. Yes. It's a phrase. My sister, my sister in Rhode Island, she has internet now, so she can um, watch her, watch the church services on, on her phone now. Awesome. My brother and my sister in law got her, got her a, a brand new phone, uh -huh. and now she can listen to church services on her phone now. Well, praise the Lord. Nights. Hey, that's awesome. That's a great praise. You know what? Sometimes we take the things we have for granted. And uh, that's, that's awesome. That's good. All right. Let's pray for April. Right? Yes. Pray for April. She's okay. She's what? She's about to pop. <laughs> she better pray for Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> he has no idea what's no. fixing to do here. <laughs> That's what I love. That's what I love about this. This is good. <laughs> uh, His world is going to change. I know. We were kind of talking about that earlier. I'm coming so. to work tired. Yeah. I got two hours of sleep. I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We ready to pray? All right. Let's pray tonight. Let's open it up. I'll allow you guys to pray aloud if you would like to. If not, that's okay. Um, thank you for your prayers for, for me and the church and as we continue to uh, move through this transition. Sherry? Could I have a link? Well, God, yes, you sure can. Really concerned about her. Thank you. What's the name again? Elaine Wilcox. Oh, okay. uh, continue to pray for Stephen, I mean, and Ed Rankin. We've got so many that are going through some things and we just need to continue to lift, lift them up. It's so great as a church, though, I'm, I promise you, I don't get to experience this a lot in churches, but as a pastor to see everybody thankful for the prayers and then we continue to lift them up and love on them because of what they're, you know, what they're going through and, and the inspirations that they are because they want to be here in their family. This is their church family. And it means a lot, you know. And I, I'm telling you, Ed Reichen is a is a is a huge spiritual encouragement uh, to me as a pastor. But I know he is to all those around him. And uh, and the same with Stephen and Kathy and, and Linda Long. And I, I can go on. I mean, we we've got a lot of people that that God has brought along physically in the last three or four months. And I praise Him for that. I give Him the glory for that. It's it's awesome. So. All right, ready to pray? Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, please watch over our church. Give Toby the strength he needs to help us all through this transition. Lord, also be with the school teachers and the principals and the principal and what they're trying to do to get the schools back open again so that we can teach these children the way we want them to be taught, Lord. And bringing them up in this yes. world is hard to do now. Lord, be with each and every one of them. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Dear sweet Jesus, thank you so much for your gift. Lord, help us that we will always be in awe of this wonderful gift that you've given us and that we might take it and use it to your glory. But we pray for those that are in harm's way tonight. Brett and her fellow officers, the officers in Portland, Lord, they're going through so much right now. We pray that you put your shield of uh, protection around them and help them do the job that we paid them to do and keep them safe, Lord. Oh, we pray for Steve, Ed, Elaine, Ron, Kathy, 
all these people that have been ill, but you have put your healing hand upon them, yes. and they're Thank getting you, better Jesus. every day. Thank we you. praise you for that wonderful thing that you've done. Mm -hmm. Lord, we give you our school and our free school. Lord, the people that we have working in those capacities are working so hard to make sure everything is done exactly the way it's supposed to be. Lord, we know you bless this effort, and we thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you so much, and we love you. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you for this time together tonight and just being here together and God just being able to worship you and be grateful for the things you're doing for our church family. God, help us to see all that you will continue to do for us and all that we do have to be grateful for. God, I just lift up to you those who are in nursing homes right now. God, just those who are, who are struggling through that. Pray that you would strengthen those who are working there, bring them encouragement, and pray that you would help them to love the people they're working with and to offer them hope. And pray that you would be with the people who are staying there, who are feeling hopeless, who are feeling just tired of being alone. That you would strengthen them, that you would encourage them, that you would offer them hope, and that they may be able to, to know the friend that you are to know that hope that they have in you, in the light that you are, that that would be the way that you would be with me. We pray that you would be with Jerry and conscious to her situation, be encouraging her, and, um, God just providing her the love and support that she needs. God, I just pray that you would be with me and just keep her safe as she travels this next week and just encourage her just her travels and until she can return home. God be with her her daughter in this court case and just God let a resolution come to that. Let this uh, finally be able to come to an end. Just bring encouragement and let your grace be with that. God just thank you for um, her relationship with Katie. God just how it's been just a reflection of you and how it has just been a way that you've loved her. Please just continue to bless that relationship to bring healing into her life um, from her past. God, please just continue to bless me and the rest of our day. Father, we're so grateful tonight just to uh, praise you, to thank you for the things that you're doing. And Lord, you continue to, uh, to amaze us at times that, that, uh, that are incredible. I thank you for Harold and, and his life and the miracle uh, of, of pulling all the cancer out of his body, Lord. And we're just so thankful for that. Lord, I pray for him. I lift him up to you. Uh, I pray for Mary as his caretaker to continue to to help him and get him home and the children, uh, Lord, and the grandkids. And we're so thankful for what you've done. Lord, just help him to heal, heal quickly and to be able to get back into the things he loves to do and loving his family and, and uh, all the activities, Lord. We're so thankful for that. Thank you for Summer and you continue to uh, do the work in her life, Father. Continue to work on her her body physically where she can get her breath. And, and we're so grateful, though, for carrying her through uh, the COVID and Lord, we pray for Kate and Lord, I, I thank you for Marianne and, and her love for her girls and, and Lord, uh, we just pray that uh, Kate and Will would be able to conceive Father. 
Lord, that they would be able to have a baby. And Lord, help them to, to be patient, to allow things to happen as only you would allow them to happen, Father. And Lord, that you are the creator and that you uh, can help them if they would just rely on you during this time. And Father, thank you for, uh, for Mary Ann. And, and Lord, I pray that that the mechanic would get their van would get their van going, Father, Lord, whatever it may be, that they would get it fixed so that she would have her vehicle back. Thank you for her kids and how they continue to help each other as a family. Uh, they're an example to all of us, and we just thank you for their for their lives and for their service in this church. Lord, we thank you for for uh, Jeff and Sherry, Father. We lift up Stephen to you, Lord. He is in need uh, of a job and just waiting, and Lord, that's hard. And Lord, I pray that he would just uh, have the patience also and, and the ability just to allow you to lead him and, and direct him in, in the ways that he needs uh, to find the place of service for him. Father, Lord, I thank you for uh, for how you work in our lives and our families. And uh, Lord, I lift up Kayla's cousins and continue to uh, ask you to protect them as they go through uh, the COVID piece, Lord, and, and they've lost two already. And Lord, I pray that the rest of their family would make it through uh, through this time. And, and Lord, this disease is just terrible. It's doing so many things from depression to uh, to burdens and, and needs, Lord, and, and different ways of life. And, and Father, it's uh, so, so unanswered. But Lord, you are the God of all things and you have the answers. And help us as, as your children to, to trust you and to rely on you. Uh, for our needs during this time. And Lord, that we would be light in darkness. And we pray for those who don't know you, Father. Lord, we lift them up to you. Lord, we pray that you would just uh, maybe take this time of, of, of uncertainty and use it as a way to draw more to you, Father. And Lord, we just pray for that. And, and Lord, as people come into our church, help us to love them and to encourage them to be intentional on, on meeting them and, and loving them, Father, and trying to uh, find out what their needs are, number one, spiritually, Father, and then physically. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you would continue to bring people to us and bring families to us, uh, Lord, uh, as we uh, move through this transition and this time of uncertainty. You have just been amazing, Lord, and we give you praise for that and give you glory for that. Lord, we lift April up to you, Father. She's so close. She's so close and she means so much to all of us. I thank you for Bruce and, and his work and his calling. And, and Lord, I pray that uh, this would be a joyous time, that uh, they would in, uh, just take this, this creation, this miracle that's coming their way, and that they would uh, just take the times that they have to enjoy each other and to enjoy the new one. And Lord, just be with her as she goes through the process. Lord, that, uh, that as she gets close and she's, she's tired and she's not sleeping well, and, and Lord, I pray that as soon as you're ready, Lord, that you would uh, bring that new life into this world. Lord, that uh, we would give you glory for all of that. Lord, thank you for the time that we've had tonight. Lord, as we get dig into your word and, uh, and we, we, we talk about uh, the things that you have for us tonight, Lord, we're just thankful for your word and for how powerful it is and how it leads us and how it guides us and how that we are continuing to follow that word, that you would take us all the way to the time where you either come and get us or bring us home. And we give you glory for that. Lord, tonight, we just want to say, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Open our Bibles to the book of John. We're going to finish the first chapter of John. We're still on the second event of, of the life of Christ. And uh, so it's, um, we made it through uh, 10 verses out of 18 last week, and I want to continue the rest of them uh, as we uh, talk about how the life of Christ and, and how that he becomes human and, and that he is the son of God. And in the book of John, John uh, is just so clear with what he's presented. And last week we did some things that was kind of different but we read one, one verse and then we allowed the Lord just to speak to our hearts. Okay. And what does that mean to you? All right. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to be willing to share after we read the verse, what does that do for you? What does that do for you spiritually? 
um, what does that do for you as a believer or as a Christian in this world today? What does that mean? Okay. And so I want to kind of, kind of talk about that. We're going to go back a little bit to verse nine. And, uh, and we talked about being light and darkness last week as we were leaving. We talked about singing this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. And, and, uh, and that's how we ended. And, but I want to, I want to make sure that the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world at this time. Um, at that time, people have been told through the Old Testament about a Messiah coming. Okay. Um, and then John begins to write this. And, and, and as he writes it, he says, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. What do you think the, tr the true light that gives light to every man? What does that statement say to you? Are there other types of light that we deal with in our world today? Any other light that might, we might deal with? In any way, what, what? I said Sunday that we are a place without a cause. <laughs> I really believe that. Uh, not, not necessarily as a church, but just as where we're at right now with all the things going on, it's all over the board. What would be a light during this time? Any light, anybody? Christ. Okay, spiritually, Christ is a light. He's the hope. What would be a worldly light? I think it's important that we notice them. Anybody have a worldly light? Probably leadership. Leadership? leadership that's backed by faith. Okay. That would, be, that would be a light. All right. Any other lights? This is a great question because it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to think about what other lights there are because we're believers and the only light we have is our faith. All right, and that's what John is saying here. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. So someone that may not be a Christian, what would their light be? Social media. Social media. What's another one? Alcohol. That's a light to a lot of people. Marijuana is a light to a lot of people. You know, it's, it's what they live for. It's what they... It's what, it's what gets them from one day to the next. Could be a job. Could be a job. It could be a relationship. There's a lot of things that light us up. There's a lot of things that light us up because things are good. All right? You know, Sandra pulled up something this afternoon from Bubba Watson, the pro golfer. Yeah. It went on three or four pages on Facebook there about what was going on and what he thought of it and get your act together. And the last three lines, he referred to God. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Can you repeat that? He's Bubba Watson, who is a golfer. Uh, they pulled up uh, some kind of article on Facebook and he was talking about the times that we're in and all the things that was going on. And the last three sentences were all about God. And, uh, but we're starting to see people who are maybe hesitant in their faith starting to say what the true light is. You know what I'm saying? Well, I love going through towns. Uh, Montrose is Montrose Tough. You know, Montrose, you see the signs, Montrose Tough. And, and uh, uh, we'll get through this together. That's another sign. And, and there's, so there's, there, there's light in, in slogans and hopes and and all of these type of things to try to pull people together, yet there's only one true light that pulls us together, and that's God. And, and right here, John, he says it in verse 9. I had to go back to it because we talked about the light and everything, but he's proclaiming what that light is. And that's where we need to be as believers. If we truly know where the light truly is, we need to proclaim it in every part of our life and in every part of our world, proclaiming that there is only the true light, and that light was Christ. All right, and and I like it as he's trying to he's trying to get to us to show us that he was that, that Christ was real and he was human. Okay, and and I do believe that this is a human aspect that we have 
uh, in being able to show the light and to let the light uh, be a witness to us. And he was saying it was going to be that gives the light to every man. And that person was coming into the world. Okay. Now let's move to verse 10. He was not recognized. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Now, we talked a little bit about this last week. All right. You know, he was in the world, and though the world was, was made through him, the world did not recognize him. What does that say to you? Anybody? I like that. Camouflage. You know, that's what comes to my mind. I'm thinking camouflage. You know, he was there. All right. And, and everything that, that there is is made through him. But we didn't recognize him. We didn't recognize him. And I think about my salvation experience, and I was a kid, but I would have never recognized him unless someone led me through that and, and helped me see who he was, right? And John still, he's still testifying here. He's saying, listen, you know, wake, wake up, open your eyes. And, and, and understand. And I, I, I go through camouflage. I go through, um, you know, he was, he was like us. We would not even know he was here. Because we just assumed the norm. That life is moving forward and we're just doing our thing. And we didn't recognize it. Okay? Anybody else have anything on that verse? That, that's what I see. He was not recognized. I, I think that's a very powerful thing, though. Because there are so many people out in the world that don't recognize him. Of who he is and what he does for us. We, all, we could all say, well, it's because he's not standing right here with us. That would be the mentality of the world, very much, okay? But I have to say, he's here today. He's alive because I see what he's doing in A my life. A lot of times when I have conversations with people and I hear things that have been done that there's not an explanation for it, and it automatically slides out, well, that's a God thing. Yeah. And then you see the wheels start turning in their head and they say, oh, it's okay for me to say it's a God thing. Right. And I think people are afraid to identify anymore. Sure. Well, that may be a commitment. Mm -hmm. if, if someone says it's a God thing, it's a commitment for them. That means they, they believe in God. Mm -hmm. That's why they're not going to say that. And then there are people who just flat ignore it and don't want to even go down that road. That's taboo. Mm -hmm. You know, so. But how do they function? <laughs> I couldn't function if I didn't have my Lord. How can people see different things and not give God the glory for it? Yeah. For certain things. Yeah, I, I struggle too, okay? But I still have to go back to the time and sometimes even in my life as a Christian where I have not recognized God. I did things that I should not have done. And then I can understand why. You know, then I can understand that, that question. Um, but for the most part, right now, when, when, man, we're just, I hope, and I see it in the church, I see so many drawing close to God like they've never drawn close to the Lord. And I don't know about you, I'm doing the same thing, man. I'm spending some, some, some time in the Word thinking, wow, I got I to gotta get into this because it, it's speaking to me right now. It's alive. And we as Christians sometimes don't allow the word to be alive in our life. Don't allow it to be the true light that keeps us going from day to day to day. Because I'm telling you, every morning it's harder to get up. You know, unless I know I'm fixing to go spend some time in the light. And, and it, that's what it's, I don't know what it is. It just starts to excite me a little bit about seeing him working and, and knowing he's working in, in my life, but in the church's life or in the ministry that he's called me to or in the ministry that he's called Bookcliff to, um, all of those type of things, it starts to energize you and give you some energy because you want to see 
him do more things than he's doing. We've talked about all the praises, all the things that's spiritually happening in our church. And there, there's even more that, that hasn't even been shared that get, I get. And it's, it's just amazing to see what's happening. And that excites me because of this is because we are starting to recognize him. We truly are. And I think that is a struggle in every Christian's life is to recognize him more. The camo's coming off. You know what I'm saying? All right. Get through this. All right. Verse 11. He came to that. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Comments? Well, that's like anybody that is really great. I mean, they become famous and then they go back home and nobody appreciates the fact. Well said. That's interesting. Well, his own had been indoctrinated for thousands of years that there was a king coming, a messiah coming. That's right. Not just an ordinary human man. That's right. That's correct. And they couldn't even see it as an ordinary human right. being. And I believe, just as I said a while ago, because he's not here, people don't believe. It's the same thing that was going on there. That's the exact same thing, Don. You're, you're right. It's a great comment. He came to that which was his own, which means, which means he created us. <laughs> he created us and we don't even... It'd be like your child coming to you going, who are you? It's what they did. Yeah, it's what they did. And you know what? That's what we do. There's a lot of application to this word, to this, to this verse. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Now that's different than recognize. What's the difference? Yes. Well, I, I got a different view of that verse. All right. I'm ready. I feel like that's saying he, he, when he went back with his family, they did not receive him. They knew who he was. But they did not receive him. Then that's that's the way I. Yeah, I think you're right, Roseman. In a lot of ways, the receipt. That's why I was asking the difference between recognizing and receiving. What you're saying is, we know him, and this is the world. The world knows that this is fact, and we have to receive him. Yet people don't. Right. Well said. If I went a different direction to confuse you, I didn't mean to. That is, that is, that is correct. It's receiving him. And I, and I like the word receive here. It's, it's pretty powerful to speak to. Speak to. Uh, there's a lot of difference in just knowing. I believe that there are people out there that know him but don't have him. Amen? We know that. They know all about it. But they've never received they reject him. him. Yeah, they've rejected him. Which Sunday I got a good message on that, on about that. So I want to get started. Okay. All right. Now let's go to 12. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. One of the most interesting things to me uh, before, we, before I ask you what that means to you is that choice is written all in this. All right? Please understand, as a Christian, choice is very, very important. And your theology, okay, what you believe, choice is very, very important. All right? If we didn't have choice, these verses wouldn't mean anything. And I'll read that verse one more time. Yet to all who received him, those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So you can do it. You have the right, but you got to choose to receive him. And I think that's, that's, that's powerful stuff. Anybody else have a comment on that verse, what it might mean to you? It's pretty well the gospel straightforward. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Verse 13 says, children born not of a natural descent, 
nor of a human decision or a husband, husband's will, but born of God. This is a very, very important verse. It's not talking about him being right here and we can see him. All right. It's not talking of a natural descent. Right. On mine, I have believers become children of God, reborn spiritually. That means we have a soul and it's of God. Okay. It's of God. Uh, my commentary in my Bible says all who welcome Jesus Christ as Lord of their lives are reborn spiritually receiving new life from God through faith in Christ. This new birth changes us from the inside out. Changes us from the inside out. Rearranging our attitudes, our desires, and our motives. Being born you physically alive and places you in your parents' family. Being born of God makes you spiritually alive and puts you in God's family. Have you asked Christ to make you a new person from the inside out? I like inside out. It has a lot to do with, with why we do things. Okay. There's a lot of people that just, they never truly accept Christ into their life and they, they become a Christian. They think, and they start doing things to make themselves a Christian. All right. I don't tell you, you can do all the stuff in the world try to make yourself Christian. That ain't going to happen. That's not what it's about. It's about what you do inside here. And if everybody had a, I really believe if, if, if we would, as pastors, would do a better job of talking and preaching about the inside, not the outside, we may have some better understanding, I think, uh, with some people that, you know, this is not about outside. This is, you, you've been born, you're here. It's about being reborn inside. And when you do that, your heart changes, your attitude changes. I like that. Your desires and your motives. Man, that's good stuff. Yeah, Sherry. I heard a minister on Christian Radio this today talking about rebirth. And he said, it's not, God doesn't fix something that's broken. He doesn't make you a little bit better. He completely... Like you said, changes, changes you from the inside. It's new. Yeah, it's new. Yeah. I've experienced that. How about you? I, I remember. I, re, I truly do remember thinking, wow, I'm still myself. I'm still with my mom and dad. Yeah, I'm still that. But my whole perspective is different. My desires change. All right? It's good stuff. It's hard. This is hard stuff also. It's deep. All right. Any other questions? I'm 13. Good. Any comments? All right. 14. The word became flesh and made his, his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the father, full of grace and truth. This is it. This is where John says, the word became flesh. How important is that? That's pretty important, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very important. This is where faith kicks in, in my book. This is where faith kicks in. It, it, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He walked on this earth as one of us. We have seen his glory. What's that? Any idea? His whole being, being able to love everyone. Yeah. Equally, yeah. And want to care for us. Yeah. What she said is his whole being, the whole thing of who he is in the flesh, in our ways, in our world. In his glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. There was such a difference about who he was. I love to read the stories and see where he interacted with the woman at the well. Or he interacted with Peter when Peter was, you know, and interacted with the disciples. 
But the ones that really are interest me is when he, when he interacted with the common people. There was such a, uh, there was such a jealousy from so many others about how he did that, and it was because of his glory, uh, because of who he was, the one and only, uh, who came from the Father, and he was full of grace and truth. Everything he said, every action that he did was grace and truth. And you think the Pharisees and Sadducees recognized that? Do I think they recognized it? Oh, no. I, I don't know if they really did. Some of them may have, maybe. But from what I read, no. I don't... But they, they were so jealous of him, they wanted him dead. Well, that's because of what he was saying, <laughs> of, or people were saying about him most of the time. People were saying, this is the Messiah, this was all that. And that's when they started to say, well, you know, this. And, and of course, they said, you say in the end, when they were fixing to crucify him, they said, you said, you're the, you're the Messiah, the King of Kings. And they said, that's blasphemy. And, and he says, but he says, I am who I am. That's one of the times that they took the law and twisted it around to make it fit their own needs. Very well. Which yeah. is what's happening right now in our world taking the law and twisting it to the needs that, that needs to be. I, I love marriage, and the reason I like marriage is because I tell people all the time, I said, our government has tried to define marriage for many, many years, and they can't do it. You know why? It wasn't created in the government. It was created in the Bible. <laughs> and they struggle, you know, a man being married to a man and a woman, you know, they, they try to define so many, and it's, it's hysterical to me because I tell people all the time, they cannot define what marriage is. Marriage is defined in God's word. But you're exactly right, Marianne. There are other things besides that, that they try to, to, you know, to put together when it's, I love when they start talking about God and in politics and, and then all of a sudden it just gets, <laughs> it gets cut off real quick because they don't know where to go with it. You know, well, there's only one place to go with it and that's up. Mm -hmm. And, and it's going to get, it's going to get more and more. I, I, even to what Don was saying about the article with the guy and he wrote through, you're going to see more and more people trying to connect with God, trying to contact who, what they're going through with God. And that excites me. That excites me because I pray that that the Spirit of God will get all over them and they will find the truth. And But what worries me and scares me is what the enemy is doing to twist it up, to make it easy for people to, uh, you know, to, to say, well, I can still live my life the way I'm living and, and, and you know, be okay. And uh, it's not true. It's not true. Great verse. Should underline that in your Bible. Anybody else commenting on this verse? Have anything to say? I got to be careful. I start preaching. All right. Verse 15. John testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me was surpassed by me, surpassed me because he was before me. Oh, this is good. This is good. He's preaching. And he says, I love the, the quote there. He said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. What does that mean? He was before him. That's right. Because he was before everything. Yeah. He was, and, there, he was there when it was created, when the world was created. Yeah. I mean, it's a great line of what he's saying. How, how does that affect people? He who comes after me has surpassed me. I mean, can anybody else say that? Well, I think John the Baptist was giving Christ recognition as a human being and as also God's son, because literally he did come after him, because John the Baptist was born first and Jesus was born several months later. And John's recognizing that, but then he knows who Jesus is. Yes. What was so good about this was the natural part and how the spiritual part passed. You got it? Because he was the creator. 
And he's acknowledging that and trying to catch the attention of all of us. That the spiritual peace passes. The reborn peace of us spiritually in our life is more important um, to us as first and second. I mean, it's, it's always a competition, especially in these days. It was very much, you know, the first and the second, the third, firstborn, secondborn, all that type of things. But he's just making a comment to everyone that says, hey, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. He is acknowledging the spiritual that he is the creator. Exactly is what Sherry's saying. He is the creator. And it means um, that's... And, and I still get amazed at how some of the sentences that are, that are said by some of the writers that... I would never even think about saying something like that. I mean, there's a lot of wisdom in that sentence. A lot of wisdom in that sentence. And how to say it without being, without being, hey, what do you mean by that? You know what I'm saying? It's pretty well straight to the point. I think that <clears throat> that would be very confusing to someone who didn't know. But if you are a believer, you understand that verse. But if you don't understand, you're going to say, what's that mean? Wouldn't recognize it. Right. Yeah. It also might give an opportunity to tell him what it means. But he's not going to have to because what's going to happen? Jesus is going to be there, right? I mean, we're, we're going to walk through these events. He's just setting it up that Jesus is going to come. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I agree. There will be some that go scratching their noggin. Like I say, it's an incredible, it's a, what well, they call that metaphor way of describing. Um, it, it's just amazing that some that he would say that in that type of way to kind of get their attention. Well, did you ever stop and think about? I read the Bible before I was really a Christian. I was raised in a Christian home, but that didn't make me a Christian. Nope. I didn't understand it. I would think, what in the world? Why, what did they, they get out of this? I didn't understand anything. But once I come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, then it just seems like I was able to see. I was able to understand. Before that, I, I couldn't make sense of it. Every, go ahead, Mary. I consider, I consider that as the Holy Spirit opening the eyes of your heart. It's yeah, but he, does, see the he didn't open it up to me until after I received. Right. The first thing when someone receives Christ, I tell them to read the book of John. I tell them, I said, the first thing you need to do is read the book of John. And you need to write down every question that you have so that we can cover that. I, I will be honest with you. John chapter 1, these first 18 verses, if you were to read that as a new Christian, boy, you could be scratching your noggin saying, man, why did I just get myself into? And then understanding, uh, you know, and that's where it comes to verse 14 when he says the word became flesh. And then they would understand because of Christmas and what happened at Easter. And then you can kind of put some things together. And that's usually what happens when a new Christian starts to read the book of John. They start to put some things together and it starts, starts making sense. Wow. I'm going to have to hurry. All right. Grace and truth, verses 16. Let's see, verse 16. From fullness of His grace, we have, we have all received one blessing after another. Man. Amen to that? Amen. We amen to that. 17. For the law was given through Moses. This is important. What does that say about the Old Testament? It's relevant. It's important. Yeah, it's relevant. And uh, it says, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Christ. Grace and truth came through Christ. We have to have the law because that tells us the things that are sin, they tell us that yeah. tells us how we gotta live. Correct. So we have to have the old testament. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of places that don't. You know, they I like the other side. Christians that don't believe it, but I do. Yeah. And the last one, no one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Has made him known. Has made him known. Unbelievable. God, the one and only. 
Man, when we praise Him, we, we should use that probably more of acknowledging because He is the one and only. And, and He has been so awesome um, for what He has done for us. And we're so grateful and so thankful for it. All right. Next week, we go through genealogy <laughs> in the life of Christ. Uh, it won't be real intense. Uh, there's a lot of them begats, 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 and, and, and the son ofs, and the son ofs. And so it's going to be interesting to, to read uh, out of, I think it's Mark and uh, out of Luke. So we'll take both of those books and read through those, and that'll be next week. All right. Well, thank you for being here. Let's pray as we go. All right. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Uh, thank you for what it speaks to us and that you are here. You are real. You are alive. And you are the one and only. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're streaming with us, thank you for being with us. And we will see you on Sunday. All right.